Hey there, I'm Bill and welcome to Project Build, where today we're making and installing this range hood cabinet in the kitchen. This range hood is intended to fit above a standard 30 inch wide stove top, but it can be modified to fit your space if needed. I designed the range hood to go 12 inches above the bottom of the upper cabinets, so it's about 30 inches from the stove top to the bottom of the range hood. There's a seven inch tall flat face on the front, and then it angles back as it goes up and ends in line with the tops of the doors on the stacked upper cabinets with a 1 8 inch gap between the top of the range hood and the crown molding above. And the depth of this cabinet is based off this range hood liner that I used. For detailed dimensions, be sure to check out the free plans that are available on my website, and I've linked those down in the video description. All right, let's get to work. I started by cutting a four foot wide sheet of three quarter inch plywood to the length I needed for the side panels of the cabinet using a circular saw and a straight edge, and then cut two pieces to width for those side panels. I also ripped pieces for the front and back bottoms of the range hood from the remaining plywood and cut them to length on the miter saw. The front edge of the range hood cabinet is going to be angled, so to make this taper cut, I marked how wide the cabinet will be at the top and how far up the flat face on the front comes and then connected the two marks with the straight edge. I checked the angle of my marked line just to make sure I had measured things correctly. This line is where I want to cut to, but there's an offset from the edge of the saw base to the blade. On my saw, it's 1 and 7 16 inches. So I marked a few lines perpendicular to the cut line and then measured over that offset distance and made marks there. Then I clamped a straight edge at those marks and cut along it. I saved these cutoff pieces as I actually end up using them later in the video. I repeated for the other side to make an identical panel. I drilled pocket holes in both ends of the cross pieces that will span the front and back of the cabinet. I edge banded the bottom edge of one of my cross pieces, first using an iron to heat the edge banding then pressing the adhesive into the plywood using the edge of a wooden block while it was still hot. Once cool, I trimmed the banding first at the ends and then along the long edges of the plywood. And I'll repeat this on the bottom edges of the other three pieces of the cabinet that will face down towards the stove. I've linked a guide for those not familiar with edge banding down in the video description. I clamped the range hood together using woodworking bar clamps and then screwed the front cross piece in place using pocket hole screws. Then I clamped the back cross piece in place too, but before screwing it together, I wanted to check and make sure that the range hood liner that I'm using fits. It took some work to get it in place, but it does fit, so I screwed the back piece in place just like the front. I needed to add a cross piece at the top of the cabinet too, but the existing duct for my range hood comes down flat against the wall, so I've got to build around it. To do so, I screwed two pieces at the back top edge of the cabinet and these stick up a bit above the top so I'll be able to screw through them into the wall later and then screwed smaller pieces perpendicular to the ends of those to account for the depth of the rectangular ducting. I added a piece across the top of the box and screwed the smaller pieces to that cross piece to complete this duct avoiding frame. Every situation is going to be different so just modify as needed. Hopefully your ducting won't come right up against the wall and you can just put a cross piece directly at the back top edge of your cabinet. I made the front panel out of half inch plywood to save weight and I went ahead and cut it to width but due to the 8.5 degree angle of the cabinet there was a small gap where it meets the cross piece below. To account for this, I set my table saw to 8.5 degrees and then ripped the bottom edge. It fits much better now, so I marked the top edge and then cut this out on the table saw too using that same angle. To support the front panel, I clamped some strips of 3 quarter inch plywood in place, set back the thickness of that front panel material, and then screwed them in place. I took the angled pieces I cut off earlier and used them to allow me to clamp the panel flush with the front edge and screwed plywood strips against the back side of the cabinet that will support this front panel and give me something to attach it to. I marked the open locations between support pieces and then drilled half inch pocket holes at those locations. Then I set the panel back in place, tacked it with my brad nailer to hold it to the support pieces behind and screwed the panel to the sides of the cabinet using one inch pocket screws. And I'm just about ready to add trim to the cabinet, but first I sanded where the front panel meets the cross piece below since they didn't really line up quite as well as I wanted them to. To trim out the front of the range hood cabinet, I started with these two and a quarter wide by one quarter inch thick trim pieces. I spread wood glue on the back using a brayer roller and then tacked them in place with brads. The ends of the pieces that go on the front angle part of the cabinet don't sit flush against the trim below, so I took those to the miter saw, setting the saw to that same 8.5 degree bevel, and cut one end of the trim. 
And now that it sits flush, I set it in place and mark the top edge, noting the direction of the angle on the side of the trim, and then cut it off. Then I glued the strip and set it in place. Now it didn't line up perfectly with the trim below, so I shimmed it up slightly with a wooden toothpick and then tacked that trim in place. I went back and broke off the toothpick and then tapped the end with a hammer to drive it flush with the side of the hood. I added another piece of trim on the other edge of the cabinet and then put a piece between the two at the top. I'm using a block so the top edges of the trim line up and it looks slightly below the top from this angle but it will look correct from straight on and from below. It's pretty much the same process to add the other two trim pieces in between, just being sure that they are evenly spaced across the front. I still needed some support at the top of the cabinet to have something to attach crown molding to so I added some small pieces at the front edges of each side and screwed them in place. Then I screwed a small strip between them so that the bottom edge of the crown molding will be covered and there won't be an open gap, but that there's still room above the range hood cabinet for me to reach through and screw into the wall. The range hood cabinet is built and now it's time to make it look good. I filled the seams around the trim with wood filler as well as all the brad nail holes on the front and when the filler was dry, I sanded it smooth with 150 grit sandpaper on my orbital sander. I sprayed on a coat of primer, then 10% with water, with my paint sprayer, making smooth, steady strokes, overlapping each stroke slightly, and I'm spraying from about 6 to 8 inches above the surface of the cabinet, pulling the trigger before moving over one end and releasing the trigger after passing over the other end. Moving around the cabinet was really cumbersome and actually caused me to make some mistakes spraying the primer, so I thought of a temporary solution to fix that. I got a cabinet grade Lazy Susan and screwed it to some 2x4s and then screwed that to a sheet of scrap plywood. This will allow me to stay in one place and rotate the cabinet instead of moving around it. The first coat of primer raises the grain slightly and highlights any imperfections, so I touched those up with some wood filler and then sanded the whole cabinet with 320 grit sandpaper. I blew off any sanding dust with my compressor and then sprayed on a second coat of primer. From here, I sanded the primer by hand with 320 grit sandpaper and then I sprayed on three light coats of semi-gloss white. And it looks really good. The range hood cabinet is done and now comes the oh so fun part of installing it. To attach the fan unit to the hood liner, I mounted a couple of scrap 2x4s to the top of the liner with double sided tape flipped it over, and dropped the fan unit in place. I center punched the mounting holes, pre-drilled them, and screwed the unit to the 2x4s. Next, I removed the electrical cover panel and pulled the wires out. Then on the other side of the unit, I inserted a snap-in cable clamp into the knockout and pushed a power cord through the connector about an inch. Back on the front, I twisted the same colored wires together with wire caps, pushed everything back inside the fan unit, and closed it off. You could hardwire this unit directly to the power coming from your wall, but it's a lot easier to install it by adding a cord and then plugging it into an outlet. The exhaust from this fan unit is 7 inches in diameter, which is not a super common size for ducting, so I wanted to reduce it down to 6 inches as there are a lot more adapters sold for that size. The reducer didn't quite fit at first, so I made evenly spaced marks around the base of the reducer and made relief cuts with snips, adding more cuts until I could get it to slide over the collar of the fan unit. I covered the relief cuts with foil tape and then taped the seams between the reducer and the fan unit with a couple layers of tape. Before going any further, I thought it was a good idea to make sure the fan wasn't obstructed and to plug the unit in and test that everything worked. The backdraft damper is going to go on top of the reducer here, and I'll install this later when I put the unit up into the range hood cabinet. The damper keeps outside air from making its way into the house and opens when the fan is turned on. My existing ducting is rectangular and too long, so I needed to cut it off. I marked a straight line with the level and then drilled a large hole to insert snips into. I first cut along the line to the left with a pair of left cutting snips, making relief cuts and pulling the material away every few inches. The existing duct was much thicker than I would have expected it to be, so this was pretty difficult to cut. The snips can't really cut around the corner effectively, so I broke the corners with a small hacksaw and then cut to the right with right cutting snips. And I really wanted to avoid doing it this way, but in the end, I cut the thing off with a cutoff wheel on a rotary tool as it was just too difficult and inaccessible to cut with snips. And pretty much right after I was finished, I realized I could have just removed the whole duct at the seam that's a few inches up from where I cut it and then reinstalled a duct of the proper length. Oh well. 
I added a rectangular to six inch duct adapter, pre-drilled through the side, going through both the duct and the adapter, and then screwed it together with sheet metal screws. To apply tape on the back side of the seam, I left the paper on the tape and then positioned it, stuck it in place on one side, and pulled the paper down and away with the tape adhering as I did so. And then I taped the rest of the seam as well. I connected a flexible duct to a duct coupler, secured it with a hose clamp, and then sealed it with foil tape. I inserted the duct coupler into the existing ductwork, pre-drilled it, screwed it together, and like before, sealed the seam with foil tape. And I made sure the flaps on the backdraft damper would open up away from the fan, inserted it into the flexible duct, and tightened the hose clamp on it. And this damper has gaskets on each end, so there was no need for foil tape here. With the ducting ready, I shined a laser line where the bottom of the range hood is going to go, and screwed a support board to the studs at that laser line. I didn't add supports at the line on the sides of the cabinets, but I would if I had to do it again. Brady helped me lift the cabinet up onto the support boards, thanks Brady, and once I got it shimmed and aligned where I wanted, I screwed it into the wall studs at the top of the cabinet through the cross support that I made earlier. I countersunk and screwed the range hood cabinet to the sides of the upper cabinets at both the bottom and the top. I also countersunk and added a few screws at the bottom of the back of the cabinet, but I didn't drive them in all the way at first. I removed the support board and shimmed that back cross piece at the wall and then finished driving those screws all the way in. I removed the rest of the shim that stuck out by scoring it with a utility knife and snapping it off at the score line. I used some leftover plywood to create a temporary table to support the fan unit while attaching the ducting. I inserted the backdraft damper, plugged the fan in, and turned it on to test before installing. And there's definitely something wrong here. It's not supposed to sound like that. The damper is opening and closing rapidly, which I thought was likely due to back pressure and I speculated that I had some kind of blockage somewhere. So venturing outside to check out the exterior vent where the duck exits the house, and well, sometimes you just see things that are hard to understand. At the top of the vent is the spring-loaded hinge where it's supposed to pivot, and at the bottom, someone cocked the thing shut. Who would do such a thing? I cut it free and a bit of scraping later and it's free to open as intended back inside the house, and the damper is now working properly. I plugged in the fan unit, lifted it up into place, and guess what? Another problem. Upon inspection, I realized that the tops of the 2x4s that the fan unit is mounted to are hitting the lowest cross support inside of the cabinet and need to be trimmed to be flush with the top of the fan unit. I got those trimmed up, and now we can return to our regularly scheduled program. I lifted the unit up slowly, making sure to keep it level as I wedged it into place, and hooray, it fits. I center punched, pre-drilled, and screwed through the mounting holes to attach the unit securely. Lastly, I installed the grease filter, and we've got ourselves a fully functioning range hood. Woohoo! Did you think we were done? Cause we're not quiet there. There are still some finishing touches to be added. I added trim to the sides of the cabinets next to the range hood and painted them to match. There are small gaps between the range hood cabinet and the upper cabinets next to it, so I filled those with a bead of caulk and smoothed it out with a wet finger. I still needed to install my crown molding. I made a two-part molding, first installing the lower part by placing an eighth inch tile spacer on top of the range hood cabinet and then placing a painted one by six on top of those tile spacers. I tacked it in place with my brad nailer and then did the same to add the piece across the front of the range hood. The upper part of the crown is a 1x4 that butts up against the lower part, and I attached this by nailing it to the ceiling, being sure to tack it to the ceiling joist where possible. I filled the brad holes with spackle, and when dry, I wiped off the excess with a damp paper towel. I used a flexible caulk to fill all the seams between the boards, starting with the 90 degree corners. And I saved the miter joints for last, as these were a lot messier. I pushed the caulk into the joints and then cleaned the excess caulk off with a damp paper towel, being sure to wipe across the joints and not down them. Lastly, I added a coat of paint to the crown molding, first painting the caulk lines with a brush and then the flat faces with a foam roller. And we're so close to done, but one last thing I wanted to mention was that the cabinet doors can hit the range hood if open fully, so to prevent that, I added an angle restriction clip to each hinge. These clips keep the doors from opening past 90 degrees and now they don't hit the range hood. And we're done making the range hood cabinet. 
If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, comment, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And if you want to make a range hood cabinet like this, be sure to check out the free plans linked down in the video description. And if you want to see more projects like this one, check out my other videos. Until next time, go build yourself and a range hood. Aww.